there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Rough night last night. A few interruptions. I'm very tired. I'm struggling to sleep. Normally we would have support workers coming in and respite, but we haven't had that in the last four weeks. Then lockdown. Because of the lockdown, Andrew's mum had to go back. There's no, no respite anymore. Oh, it's just hard. I just want a break. What do we want to do food-wise? Last year, we met Bronnie Markey and her sisters Angela and Donna, who were unknown carriers of a rare genetic condition called Fragile X. Harry, can you stand nicely with my name? Five of their eight children have been diagnosed with Fragile X, including Ronnie's sons, Harry and Ben. Let's do a quick episode, cheese. One, two, three. Hi! Generally, happy, smiley, great senses of humour. Um, very, di very different from autism. The similarities are sensory issues, behaviour social anxiety. The main difference is that children with autism can have normal intelligence. Children with fragile X, there is always an intellectual component. They have physical characteristics. Generally, they have a large protruding forehead and big ears, a long face. Life is busy for any parent, but for Bronnie and husband Andrew, it's more challenging than most. Hey, you sleepy tired. Hey. Parenting children is hard, and when you've got kids with disabilities, I think that's an extra layer of difficulty about it to parent um, children like that. There, it's it's different and it's hard, and if you don't agree on things, um, it can put a big strain on things. The boys have required Bronnie's full-time attention. Our life's really busy. Harry's now at school and Ben goes to kindy three days a week. I used to work as a nurse specialist in bone marrow transplant. Would have liked to have gone back to work, but it's just not been possible. Do you want to have a little bit of porridge, Benny? No. Want some porridge? It's hot, though. Hot. Ben's anxiety has increased over the last year. Ben doesn't like direct attention, so quite often at dinner time, well, we're just not allowed to look at him because <laughs> he gets really anxious, and when he's anxious, he throws things and he'll throw whatever he's holding, iPad, a glass, a plate. He just throws it like, um, he doesn't even think about it. It's just a reflex when he's feeling anxious. Hold, we do it together. Sleep and fragile X, it's another common thread. Harry still doesn't sleep through the night. Last night, I heard him at at half past one, talking to himself for a while, and then he was awake at half past four, yelling and carrying on <laughs> for an hour and a half. Mummy! Mum! No more bad, that's enough. Ben, in the last 15 months, has stopped sleeping so well. If he wakes up, he gets on hands and knees and rocks and bangs his head, so we actually had the headboard off, so he started banging his head against the wall, so now we just pull his bed out from the wall but now he stims a lot, so he's humming and he's jiggling his arms and tensing up his whole body. And it keeps us all awake, because it's really loud. Hey, you need to eat your porridge, and if you eat your porridge, maybe we could have a piece of toast. So they would eat all day if they could. We saw a psychologist from America who he says that the senses in their mouth aren't fully developed. Mom, so they don't feel mom, mom, food mom, in their mouth, so that's mom, why they mom, stuff. Mom, so the boys mom, really... Mom, mom. Eat very fast. Yes, buddy. It's been four years of really struggling. It's like having a newborn for four years. But two of them. <laughs> four, three, two, one, zero! Bronnie usually gets some respite when the boys are at school during the week. I started work every Tuesday. 
from nine till five and I love it. <laughs> it's my day off. It's just being around other adults. I'm a nurse, I'm not a mum of two disabled kids. Yeah, it's, it keeps me sane, yeah. I'd be mad without it. Nobody could have predicted that in March, a global pandemic would send the country into lockdown almost overnight. For Bronnie, the impact is enormous. After the first five days, their behaviour got quite bad. They just get really, really silly and um, they can't sit still and they wriggle and they laugh a lot. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're happy. It means that they're uncomfortable and they don't know how to express that this doesn't feel right and they've never once asked me, why don't we go out anymore? Why don't we see Popper anymore? Why don't we go to school? I think they just don't know to ask those questions. Their only way of expressing, hey, something's different, is by acting out. We have decided that we have to get back to getting in the routine. Boys' behaviour is deteriorating. Every time. Although the boys are six and five, they're probably more intellectually, maybe a three and a four year old. So they need help with everything. Here's Harry practicing his buttons. Oh, and he's done three buttons all by himself. They can sort of dress themselves, but they don't dress appropriately for the weather. Or they put their clothes on backwards and inside out. So they need to be helped to be dressed. We've graduated from pajamas to togs. We're still working on toilet training, so they need help going to the toilet. They need me to wipe their bums and help them wash their hands after they go to the toilet. They can't get food for themselves, they need help. And when they eat, they make a large mess, so it's constantly cleaning up after them. It feels relentless. It's constantly, mummy, I need something, mummy, I need something. And as soon as I think I'm done and I think, oh, I'll sit down for five minutes, they're back. Mum, I need to go to the toilet. Mum, I need to do this. So it's, it's just relentless. This is what I mean about not being able to turn your back because as soon as you do, one is doing something, they shouldn't. At least they're trying to tidy up their mess. Oh, that's enough. No, don't you get into it. One more letter, Ben. They can't read, they can't write, so they can't do the schoolwork that their other classmates are doing, so I have to try and find a way to, to change it to suit them. Is the sound that... Ben can occupy himself for a little while, Harry not so much, and they're fiddling with things, breaking things putting things in their mouths. So you sort of have to have an eye on them all the time. There's no downtime. Even if you put a DVD on just to lie down, just to get 10 minutes rest, something always happens. <laughs> yeah, it's hard just trying to keep them entertained. And, and when you're tired and your temper's short <laughs> and um, tension spans a bit short as well, just makes it that much harder. It would be awesome just to be able to get one of our carers to come in for just, maybe not even every day, just a couple of hours, uh, a few times a week, just to take the pressure off. Um, and so that I can do something, um, lie down, read a book. Yeah, it's, it's just hard. Good boy. Adding to the pressure is the family's living situation. They recently bought some land where they plan to build a home, but the builders are locked down too. We were going to start the build, but sort of everything's on hold at the moment. So yeah, we're just living in a one room shed. We like to keep things tricky. <laughs> These are our living quarters at the moment. So Andrew and I sleep. <laughs> the TV area, 
lounge. And there's the boys' beds and bedroom. And then across there is our kitchen, bathroom, dining room. Also seeing out lockdown in cramped conditions is Nikki Stokes and her family. So as you can see, space is at a wee bit of a premium. So these boxes all over the table are full of art supplies and activities. With five children aged between four and 12, two of whom have high needs, the family has long outgrown their rental. We were applying for mortgages when we went into lockdown. Got some emails back from various banks saying that actually everything needs to be put on hold until they know what's going to be happening. It's just so crowded here. It's just kind of like the only free space we have for storage. So, so we've been working with an agency that builds houses for families that otherwise couldn't afford to do it themselves. And we'd had ACC involved and we'd had Ministry of Health involved and we desperately need it, this family. The house we're renting is just much too small now and it's not appropriately equipped for a full-time wheelchair user. Nikki's eight-year-old twins, Felix and Maddie, were both born with a disability. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, no, no pitching. Maddie, no pitching, no pitching. <laughs> Madeline has septo-optic dysplasia, which is a defect in development of her brain. Here you go, So her pituitary didn't develop and her optic nerves are underdeveloped. Here we go. She also has a brain injury, which has significantly impaired her development. She's nonverbal. She's a wheelchair user. She has quite fragile health. <laughs> Felix, he was born with phocomelia, which is interrupted development of the long bones in his arms. He has two fingers on his left side at shoulder level and three fingers on his right side. Felix has quite a severe spinal scoliosis that's progressing quite rapidly as he grows. That's going to require surgical intervention to slow the progression and stabilise the curves until he can have a spinal fusion surgery to correct it. He has a few developmental delays. He is non-verbal autistic. He's such a big boy now. Normally, the family gets support from caregivers and teacher aides. Our day would typically start somewhere between five o'clock in the morning to seven o'clock in the morning. We have our disability support worker come in and she'll help us with the morning routine, which is getting ready for school stuff, except that we have to do a bit more of it than we would with our other children. Um, I have to give them their medications, I make their lunches, I make sure that I write down how their night's gone in the communication book. You yeah, happy, happy, yeah? Pretty good night's sleep last night. Hey, Maddie, that's why you're in a good mood this morning. Yeah. I've gotten to a point now where I won't even really remember getting up and changing a nappy until I get up in the morning and I find, oh, there's a nappy there. So it just becomes kind of autopilot. You get really used to getting up and doing what you need to do. Once a week, Nikki usually gets a night off when the twins stay with a friend. If the children are at respite, I might not get to go out and have a big break or a holiday style <laughs> type of break, but just that night of, of knowing that I don't need to listen out, that I don't need to worry, I seem to sleep much better. Come on, Felix, we're gonna go hop in the taxi, mate. Some Ruth, do you wanna help me take these bags out, please, honey? So when the kids leave and everyone's cleared out, I finally get some time to sit down and try and figure out what I've got to do with my day, make sure that everything's going to get done. See you later, Maddie. You have a good day. And then just trying to keep on top of the housework, making sure that there's the right foods and medications in stock, 
that the clothing they need is available, that I don't need to reorder supplies like nappies and stuff. Otherwise it can get a bit hectic and before I know it, it'll be time for them to get home. The twins have been making good progress at school. Do you want the fan? You want something else? Yeah. Okay, we'll have something else. Madeline's doing really well. She's come out of her shell. She's bright and bubbly and happy. She loves the other kids. They're quite happy to sit and hold her hand. She is staying awake for longer during the day. In fact, now she's actually staying awake most days all day, which is really cool. Good boy. Good choosing. Felix, he's just blossomed. He's really happy there. He comes home in a great mood. And it's a stark contrast to the little boy who seemed to be very suddenly cast inwards and disengaged and unhappy. But the twins are at high risk of complications from any infection. So when news of the pandemic hit, the family went into lockdown before the rest of the country. <laughs> we had decided the week before the announcement was made that we would have to put our kids into hibernate was I think the word we were using. For Madeline, she has malformation of her pituitary gland and so her body can't appropriately respond to situations where her where she might be dehydrated or her body's trying to fight infection or um, just basically anything that puts her under additional stress is going to put her into quite a compromised um, state. But she's also high risk for being somebody with limited mobility. She's had pneumonia a few times before. She's had a few stays in ICU with it. In is for night monkey. Felix has had issues with high fevers in the past due to not having arms, he doesn't vent heat or manage his temperature as well as other people. So fevers can be an additional risk for him. And also he has scoliosis. There's concern about the way that his ribs are being crushed by his spine now that he's got reduced lung capacity anyway. So this being so infectious and such an aggressive disease and with so many unknowns about how it would impact a vulnerable person. Keeping a tight bubble is vital, but also means there's no day-to-day -day support. Brush, brush, brush your teeth, brush your teeth with me. There was a change in what the alert level was and there was the plan to go into lockdown for everyone, which meant we had to kind of reassess very quickly what supports we were willing to continue having coming because that's risk. We didn't quite have the time to plan and organise ourselves as we'd hoped to. But there's definitely a lot of relief having everyone, you know, in solidarity kind of coming on board with this means that, you know, if we can eliminate this virus, then that means that our family, the risk will be gone and we won't have to be isolating for so long. OK, Maddie. So... Five children in isolation would be a challenge for any family. But with the twins' needs being so high, Nikki and James had to make the heartbreaking decision to send Felix to live in a different bubble. Felix has kind of hit a real explorative, physically busy <laughs> stage of his development. He's gotten tall enough now and he's got enough length in his arms that he can actually grab stuff off the benches and off the table and he can climb onto furniture and he, he really needs that one-on-one. -on -one. And grandparents were quite keen to have him. You know, he's going for walks on the beach and stuff because they live just by the beach. And <laughs> this is definitely the longest that we've gone without seeing him and it is hard. Oh, sweetheart. Without their usual support, Nikki is devoting much of her time to Maddie's needs, while James focuses on the other children. We try to manage what she needs from us, which is a full-time job. Normally, we would have uh, support workers coming in and respite and such, but we haven't had that in the last four weeks. Maddie's a bit upset today. 
She was having her lunch and she had a banana and then she started screaming and I wasn't quite sure what was up. Then I got her out of her chair and she was soaking wet and cold. I think maybe her lid on her cup wasn't screwed on properly. Mummy's a bit tired and just missing little things like that. We normally have a really lovely friend who does our respite care for Maddie. So that had been just a fortnightly thing and we'd been building up to having her go for one night a week each week and then a whole weekend each fortnight. Yeah, it gives Maddie a really good break from the busyness and the sensory overwhelm of being in a busy home. Yeah. And it gives us a break from the night cares and you always have to have her in the back of your mind. You know, you make sure that you check her and that you check that she's clean and dry and that she's not thirsty, that she's not hungry, that she doesn't look off. So yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit sleep deprived at the moment. Rough night last night. I say rough for me. Maddie was actually pretty happy, but yeah, a few interruptions. So today's plan is sleep breakfast. Sleep deprivation is also tipping the balance for Bronnie. It's 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> Just here at the laundromat, um, getting my respite for the day. I don't have a working laundry at home at the moment, so I have to go to the laundromat, but actually it's quite good. Harry and Ben have not been sleeping well. So we were up for a few hours in the night, last night, with Harry, and then Ben woke up early. So I'm just absolutely knackered. I'm so tired. And there's just no sort of end in sight for that at the moment. Normally you'd have them going off to school or we'd have a babysitter coming around for a few hours so we can catch up on sleep. Um, but obviously at the moment there's none of that. So just sort of feel, God, <laughs> how am I gonna do this for another three weeks if they don't start sleeping soon? So hopefully it'll get better. We'll see. Practicing his M's. Follow the lines. By the end of the week, the government announces a move down to alert level three. But without school, the pressure is still on for Bronnie. Hi. Hi again. Good days and bad days. I think a lot of it depends on what the night was like. Okay, we're going to do our numbers. Yeah, I've had a pretty hard week this week. I think with, you know, finding out that there's at least another couple of weeks to go. I find in the morning I'm, I'm positive and really motivated. Trying to teach them stuff. Harry. The afternoons and evenings are always really tough and I'm finding that a really hard time. Given up trying to homeschool today. It's just I'm not a born teacher. Makes me very frustrated. So then by the time the boys have gone to bed, I've started feeling guilty about what a horrible mum I was in the afternoon. Um, yeah, so it's just real ups and downs. Mommy. What's wrong? Mommy. What's wrong? <laughs> Behaviours getting more and more out of control and there's nothing that they do that's independent. They're still not sleeping well. You know, just sick to I just wish that they could go back to school so badly. Just me a break in the sort of doing this for three more weeks. That's so overwhelming. Nikki, too, is under more strain as the weeks add up. Well, it looks like the four-year-old has decided that walking is too hard and is going to have a sleep on the concrete. What do you think, Maddie? Is walking hard work? <laughs> nah, I didn't think so. It's nearly 7pm on Thursday of week four. <laughs> um, I'm very tired. I'm struggling to sleep. 
I'll race you to the end of the street. Watch out, bubble, Joss. Did you know that Mummy's trying to have a talk by herself? No. No, you didn't know that. You didn't know that you're not supposed to come in Mummy's room when she's having some quiet time? <laughs> no, because it doesn't work like that, does it? No. No. Making your hair crazy, I don't it. Monday morning, which means James is at work bright and early, and I am holding the fort by myself. Um, today, Joss has gotten up and decided to do lots of art. Because of the twins' vulnerability, the family will be staying in isolation even when the rest of the country starts venturing out. With level two, people who are vulnerable should be isolating. So I'm imagining it would need to be back at level one before we can be really confident to go back to normal. OK, ready? For Bronnie, though, a step down to level two means she can look forward to a more normal routine. Yeah, I mean, I am really looking forward to the boys going back to school and not so much just for me to have a break, but I can see how uncomfortable they are. They love routine. They love knowing that they go to school. Looking forward to getting some normality back and having some time to myself. Um, I think I really need it. Despite their struggles, both families have also been able to take some positives from their time in lockdown. Entertaining themselves. In terms of playing, the one thing that probably the lockdown has been good for is that they are getting more independent with their play. They've just sort of had to get out there and do stuff. Oh, no. Crying. I love your persistence. <laughs> Did you do it? Yay! Goodbye. Boys are making lunch all by themselves. What are we having? Eat. Hey? Butter. Butter. Cheese. What about the ham, Harry? Do you want ham? Bigger. Hold on. Bigger. In your mouth. Good girl. I think one of the hard parts was trying to get other people to see why it's so necessary that we'd go into isolation. What are you doing, Joss? I was just really worried that we'd be kind of forgotten. And I guess since we're all in it, it's going to take a while to get it all right. But the Ministry of Ed's having to think about how to, deli to deliver services differently. The Ministry of Health is having to think about how to deliver services differently. So, you know, that, that's a relief. I know it's hit everyone really hard. But it's been quite heartening to see the positive response. And as a culture, Kiwis, we've got quite a strong sense of fairness. And most people are really supportive of saying, actually, our vulnerable people need our protection. Whoa. Hey, <laughs>